Hi, Dr. J here, and I'm going to talk about the Laplace transform of a sine function. And I'll show you how to go about finding it. To find the Laplace transform of a sine function, you need to know two things. You need to use the linearity property, which I showed in earlier videos, which says that when you have a linear combination of inputs, f1 of t and f2 of t, scaled by constants a and b, as shown here, then the Laplace transform of this linear combination of inputs is equal to the linear combination of each individual Laplace transform of the corresponding function, again scaled by constants a and b. You also need to know the Laplace transform of exponential, in which f of t is equal to e to the minus alpha t multiplied by u of t, and the u of t is just used to define causality to make it more visible. And the Laplace transform of this exponential is equal to f of s divided by equal to 1 over s plus alpha. So here we have a sinusoid. We want to show that the Laplace transform of f of t equal a sine of uh, b beta t times u of t so we have again uh, the u of t showing causality of a sinusoidal function or in this case the sine function and that its Laplace transform is governed by f of s which is equal to a times beta divided by s squared plus beta squared and beta is the radiant frequency of this sine function in order to accomplish this, you need to know this amazing formula called Euler's formula, or identity, in which we relate the complex exponential e to the j beta t with the corresponding uh, trigonometric functions, the cosine beta t plus j beta t. You can think of this complex exponential as a polar form of a complex number, where you have an amplitude of 1 and an angle of beta t which is equal to these corresponding trig functions, the real part corresponding to cosine beta t plus j, where j is imaginary number multiplied by sine beta t. We also have this identity, e to the minus j beta t, just substitute minus j beta t. You can think of this as the conjugate in uh, polar forms, and this is the conjugate in rectangular form. Notice when I subtract this equation from this top equation here in Euler's identity, when I do that subtraction, I get e to the minus uh, e to the j beta t minus e to the minus j beta t on the left side, and on the right side when we subtract, the cosines cancel out here, and the two sine functions add up to two, multiplied by j sine beta t, and now we showed that the sine function consists of Com a combination of complex exponentials weighted by 2j for e to the j beta t and e to the minus j beta t. So this is just going from here to here with doing some uh, a little bit of algebraic gymnastics. We can break up this sum into two exponentials a e to the j beta t divided by 2j minus a e to the minus j beta t divided by 2j and we just basically broke up our function f of t into two different functions. Okay, now we're going to apply the linearity property of the Laplace transform to find the Laplace transform of this sine function here. Okay, we saw in the previous slide that we broke up this function into two parts and now we notice that we have an exponential and we know the Laplace transform of the exponential where alpha is equal to j beta from previous videos where the alpha term is anything in front of the t in the exponent of this exponential and in this case alpha is equal to j beta for this exponential and this exponential here the conjugate is the alpha is minus j beta so now using the Laplace transform property of uh, linearity, we can take this Laplace transform of this sum and break it up into two pieces. Here we have the Laplace transform of the first term for this first complex exponential, and then the Laplace transform of the second complex exponential is shown here. 
Well, we know that the Laplace transform of an exponential, uh, in this case the exponent is a complex, we have 1 over uh, s minus j beta, where we have that j beta is equal to alpha. And then uh, we have the second term of uh, minus j beta corresponds to, uh, in the exponent here, correspond to the Laplace transform of 1 over s plus j beta. Putting this in a common denominator, s minus j beta multiplied by s plus j beta, we have the numerator given as here, and we see that several things will cancel. We have the s terms cancel, because s minus s, and then we have j uh, and the j terms cancel both in numerator and denominator, but because we also have beta minus minus beta, which leads to two beta, the twos cancel out, just leaving just beta in the numerator. Now the denominator is just uh, simply doing the algebra is just uh, difference of squares, which is just s squared plus beta squared, and we recall that j beta times j beta with a minus in there is j squared is negative one, but negative negative one is just a positive one. That's why we have a positive beta, beta squared here. So here's our uh, proof of the Laplace transform of a sine function. That's causal. And we have our corresponding Laplace transform of a sine function turns out to be a beta divided by s squared plus beta squared. The next video will be the integration property of the Laplace transform, and we'll see how we can use it to find more Laplace transform of other functions. Signing off is Dr. J.